Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Python GB. Welcome back to another episode of my Minecraft Let's Play. This is the 70th episode. This is an extended episode with a map download from the point of the end of the episode. And for today, as promised in the previous episode, we are going to be doing a complete world tour, ladies and gentlemen. It is about time. We are 70 episodes in. We have been extremely busy in the previous 69 episodes, and uh, I think it's about time we uh, we did this thing. Not only for a nostalgia trip, but for those of you who are new to the series, perhaps, and want to know, you know, what goes on and how to get to certain places. So, we're going to be doing this tour in a slightly different kind of style. That being, we're going to be doing it in three main sections. The three main sections of which are going to be the three main projects we have. So the first thing we're going to look at is Villager Island. The second thing we're going to look at is the Snow Village. And of course, the third thing we're going to look at is right here in Neptune's Empire. We're going to have an in-depth look at all three of those things. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to head over to Villager Island. Alright guys, here we are at Villager Island. As you can see, it is night time and things are looking pretty cool with the Halcyon Day sky. It just looks amazing, doesn't it? It really does. So obviously, the name Villager Island is simply there because we are villagers and this is... Well, it started off as an island and obviously we just decided to expand onto the mainlands all over the place, which is kind of cool. So as you can see, we have our main house right here. This is our first main house. It is pretty basic, actually. It's a pretty basic build. So if we just go inside really quick, we have all the basic amenities. You know, we have like tool storage. We've got a bunch of stuff going on here. We've got the original silky monster, which is very, very close to death. We still need to make like a tool morgue or something. That'll be a pretty cool mini project for a later date. We have uh, weapon storage. We have an ender chest. Obviously, we've got like horse related things to uh, have stored there. Uh, we have Woofy. Um, buddy, you're inside the chest. Hey, how's this working, dude? I don't even know. What if I do this? <laughs> <laughs> if I open the chest, I can see his face. Oh, what's the matter? His face gets chopped off by the blooming chest. That's uh, that's rather weird. But yeah, we have ourselves a bed. We've got some very basic things around here. Like, you know, we've got furnace. We've got a little map of the area, which is kind of cool. In fact, I, I wonder if I've updated this recently. I don't know. Let's just put it back there. Eh, doesn't look too different from before, but whatever the case, as you can see, we've got brewing stands, we've got furnaces all over the place, and of course, we have our basement. Now, our basement goes to many, many areas and many cool things. So, as you can quite clearly see, first of all, we have ourselves armor storage. Armor storage... I mean, yeah, look at all this. We've got all these armor stands pretty much filled up to the brim. We have a few little things missing here and there, but it doesn't matter a great deal. We have, like, little waterfalls in the corner just for added decoration. And, of course, you know, we've got, like, leaf blocks and glowstone in the back for lighting. And, of course, glowstone up here once again for lighting. And as you can also see, we have ourselves a bunch of, uh, you know, enchantments for our armor, which is kind of cool. So we've got all the different types. We've got, like, fire protection, regular protection. We've got, like, special types of... Uh, you know, enchantments for, like, you know, the helmets and boots and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, that's the armor room pretty much in a nutshell done. So if we just hop through here, this is actually a, uh, well, it's not really a recent build, but it's one of the newer builds of this entire sort of empire we've got going here. This, my friends, is a minecart system, and where this goes is to the snow village, which, of course, I will show you a little bit later. It's the second major project we've worked on in this world, and like I said, we'll go ahead and watch it or have a look at it a little later on. But this basically goes out to the ring road and I'll show you the ring road in just a moment but we'll stick to just having a look inside the house for now so if we just hop down here underneath the water as you can see what we have down here is a massive storage area it is ridiculously large and uh, for now I've only got signs here so you can see we've got like cobblestone blocks and stone stone bricks other kinds of stone you know all that kind of jazz but yeah we're using signs just for now I do intend on replacing these with uh, item frames so we have a slightly more visual representation of what's in each of the chests. So, you know, we've got all kinds of things here. We've got, like, nether materials, gravel, slabs and stairs. We've got all these kind of things. We've got, we've got like, end-related blocks, 
underwater monument blocks, but obviously, you know, they're all at Neptune's Empire, so <laughs> not really useful right here. We've got like potion ingredients and whatnot. It's not a great deal, but you know what? It's uh it's it's pretty basic. It's alright. But yeah. And you may have noticed that the lights actually switched on as soon as we came in, and that's because these are hooked up to what's called a T flip flop, and a T flip flop basically makes it so a pressure plate acts as a switch. So if we just go ahead and pop a new one really quick, as you can see, it turns off, and then we can just go back on it, turn it back on, and then uh, yeah, all is good to go. And obviously we've got our sort of valuables there, you know, with all these kind of things, you know, coal blocks, iron, diamond, you know, all this kind of jazz. Look at all, the, look at all the diamonds we have in this world. It's ridiculous, it really is, <laughs> and all the emeralds as well. God damn. Another here, we do have some furnaces, so, you know, if you ever want to smell anything, then boom. There you go, buddies. Right, so, let's head back upwards, obviously switching off the lights, and what we're going to do now is we are going to head downstairs. Now, you will be able to see that we uh, sort of protrude through a ravine, which is kind of cool, so, you know, there's still some little bits here and there which I could do of lighting up, you know, just to increase the spawn rates of uh, the mob trap I made later down the line, which, again, I'll show you a little later, but, yeah. <laughs> still got the uh, ravine as it is, which is pretty cool. I'm pretty sure there's still some little ores here and there which we can go ahead and grab. But yeah, let's carry on down the stairs though. Do 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 do. And what we will find is the main tree hub room for our underground tree farm. Ladies and gentlemen, this was probably the biggest sort of sub-project within this empire that I've ever built. Obviously, we have our 2x2 two two beacons here, which of course provide me with all of these effects. You know, regen, resistance, strength 2, haste 2, speed 2. They all come from here, and uh, yeah, it took a long time to dig out all the iron to make the beacons. And yes, I will repeat that, I dug out all the iron. I do not have an iron farm on this world, ladies and gentlemen. So yeah, <laughs> it feels kind of more satisfying getting all the iron yourself, I feel. I don't know, maybe that's just the way I play. But whatever the case, we have ourselves a, uh, another ender chest, you know, it's kind of cool. Uh, this tunnel leads off to the underground mine, which we'll, again, look at a little bit later. And of course, we have all of these little areas here. Uh, uh, these sort of entrances give visual representations of what's inside each of the rooms. So we've got spruce in there. We have uh, dark oak in here. And funny enough, we actually have a slime chunk inside of here. I often have slime spawning in this area, which is kind of funny. Uh, so onwards, we have acacia. And we have the storage area for all of the wood pieces that we managed to pick up. So as you can see, we've got like like uh, logs and, uh, and planks. And then just to the right hand side of it, we have the related leaves and saplings. So yeah, it's kind of cool. Again, going with like water features and like green clay. I really love this room. I really do. It's a fantastic looking room. You know, quartz and clay always goes well together in my opinion. And all the greenery just makes it look really nice, doesn't it? So yeah, kind of cool. And then obviously we have the other wood pieces as well. You know, birch. We have uh, regular oak. And of course we have jungle. So I'll tell you what, let's go inside one of these just so we can have a look at it. So let's go into the jungle one. As you can quite clearly see, we've got jungle, trees all over the place. Uh, there are enough spots for exactly half a stack of saplings for the 1x1 one one trees. And then in the 2x2 two two trees, like the dark oak, I believe I can get a stack of saplings in each one. So, yeah, that's kind of cool. But, yeah, as you can quite clearly see, there's a lot of things going in there. We can go and grab leaves, the wood, the saplings, all that kind of jazz. But, yeah, kind of cool, kind of cool. But I think that's the underground tree farm in a nutshell, pretty much done. Let's go down this tunnel, shall we? And we'll see where it leads. It's got a very basic tunnel design going right here, which is kind of cool. And obviously, eventually, my uh, beacon effects are going to wear off, so we're going to lose our speed, unfortunately. But it doesn't matter a great deal. Uh, I think one of the things I could potentially add here is a minecart system, you know, just to speed things up a bit. I've got a random chest for random materials, which I still haven't sorted out yet. And if we just pop up here really quick, as you can see, this is my mine. Now, this mine is a three-layered mine. So, obviously, we have a regular sort of level 11 diamond mine. We can even go down if we're feeling sort of, you know, confident to a level 9 mine. You might find diamonds up there. And then, of course, we have uh, a level 13 mine as well, because, obviously, you can find diamonds up there as well. But I believe, you know, 11 pretty much downwards is pretty much where you're going to find them the most common. So, yeah, we have all kinds of stone storage. And if we just go into each of these, I mean, just look at it. There's just so much, isn't there? I mean, we've got like regular granite, we've got andesite, diorite, and then this is the side which has all of the valuable stuff on. So we've got like regular stone, gravel, coal, you know, this is where all the cool things are. Lapis, gold, no diamonds, because I believe we mined them all up quite a lot earlier in the series. But yeah, that's pretty much the mine in a nutshell, which is kind of cool. So we are just going to go ahead, go up this ladder, and this will take us out near the boat dock house, which is kind of cool. So let's just go ahead and skip it until we get up there. 
All yeah, right, here we go at the top of the mining house. As you can see, we've got some little chests here, just in case you want to, I don't know, put some pickaxes in there, or, you know, just general mining supplies. And then we've got some furnaces and a little sort of utility area, as you probably normally would. So, uh, yeah, but this brings us out up here. This is a little boat dock that I made, which obviously stores boats, and we've got little sort of boating docks right here. We've even got one already here, which is kind of cool. And then obviously we could just go ahead and take it out into the country and uh, do whatever the hell we want. So, yeah, kind of cool. And if we move across, this is the first and original storage room that I made. It is, uh, it's pretty old. It's a very, very old build, but it still looks pretty cool though. You know, we've got like paintings and, and like flower pots and all kinds of storage, like food and saplings and greenery, you know, mob drops, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much all here, like the original storage room. I still come back here sometimes for like sort of generic materials. Most of them are fine in here, which is kind of weird, but oh well, it doesn't matter a great deal. So, let's move downwards into the tunnels. We're going to show you the ring road next, because again, this is a pretty sort of long-winded project that I uh, got on with. But basically, the idea of this is the villagers will be able to come down here, go through these doors, and then each of these little things sort of hosts a little house, which is pretty cool. And then obviously, this glass allows sunlight to come through, so, you know, the villagers will be able to breed, which is kind of cool. And then, yeah, it is basically a ring road with little houses all over the place. And again, this iron door just goes back to the uh, armor storage we were in earlier. And yeah, this thing goes to a ravine and also to our sort of original mine and also another portal. We'll go ahead and check that out in just a moment. But yeah, as you can quite clearly see, it is uh, it's basically a ring road, all natured up. You know, got glowstone for lighting, got paintings and decorative things sort of lined around the place. And yeah, I like it. I really like it. This is one of my personal favorite builds. Although to be honest, I'm probably going to say that a lot, aren't I? <laughs> oh man. So, if we just go out here really quick, this is a fishing shack, which I believe we made on our third ever episode, so it is a very, very old build. I've been on this world for more than a year now, funnily enough. Pretty, uh, pretty wacky sort of result, isn't it? Or amount of time. So yeah, we've got like the stuff we managed to get from fishing, you know, the junk that we managed to get from fishing, and then obviously we just go out here, do some fishing, and boom, away you go. Now, these little cobblestone pillars, I actually put here quite a while ago. These are the boundaries of the beacon, so obviously, if we go inside here, we're going to grab our beacon effects again. As you can see, we just got them, so yeah, kind of cool. Hello, Mr. Villager. <laughs> Hopefully you're all well. All right, so let's go outside onto the bridge and into the surrounding area. So, uh, first of which, you're going to go ahead and find that there is a sugarcane farm building of awesomeness, and it's all grown, which is kind of cool. Obviously, we've got this storage here as well, which is awesome. Okay, and then we've got this bridge over here, which goes over to this mainland over here, but this really doesn't go anywhere at the moment. I would, of course, like to do some expansions at some point. That's, that's one of the things with Minecraft. You can never really call a project finished. I mean, like, especially when Minecraft adds in all these updates with new blocks, you know, you could just go ahead, put new blocks in your builds and whatnot, and, you know, just revamp them just to make them look better. But, yeah, kind of cool. And this is a tunnel which basically leads to the to the forested lake. Yep, that's what I'm going to call it, the forested lake. Because as you can quite clearly see, it is a forested lake. Yeah. And it looks pretty damn awesome, doesn't it? <laughs> I like how the bottoms are all, like, lit up and we've got, like, a sort of sand ring around it. So, yeah, I really like this. And obviously, for some reason, there's, like, millions of chickens in here. This is kind of weird. I don't know if I like this or not. <laughs> okay, no worries. So, let's move up here, shall we? Now, as you can see, the beacon beams from the bottom of the tree farm sort of protrude through here all the way up to the surface, which is pretty damn awesome. And obviously, they're all coloured as well, because, you know, why not? <laughs> but yeah, this is a farm building. Very basically, just got some crops in here. Uh, yeah, I believe there was one that we didn't even do anything with. I don't know, maybe we can use this for like a seed farm or pumpkins and melons or something. Got like potatoes in here. You know, it's a very basic farmhouse, but I think it looks pretty cool. I think we did a pretty decent job of it. So moving on, we have this mob drop trap farm. Now, I feel like I've lit up quite a lot of the caves around here, so we actually get some uh, somewhat decent rates from this. So yeah, we just go ahead and kill the guys and then boom, we could just keep going. <laughs> That's pretty much all there is to it. So there we go. But yeah, this basically brings everybody down to a one shot pretty much. And then we could just grab the XP, punch them to death, grab their drops and whatnots. And all should be good to go. And I think the final thing I need to show you is just basically this pathway, which goes all the way back around to the uh, forested lake down there, which is kind of cool. You know, again, kind of lit up in the night, which is kind of cool. And we've got these little lamps here as well, which is kind of awesome as well. So yeah, aside from that, 
I think that is everything pretty much explored in terms of Villager Island. So, what we're going to do next, my friends, is we are going to move on to the Snow Village. So we're going to go through here, through the Nether Portal, and then to the Snow Village. I shall meet you guys there. Alrighty guys, here we are back in action and we are now inside of the snow village So if we just pop out here really quick as you can see there's a nether portal in there I think a good idea to start off would be to replace these doors with iron doors because I don't think I want the villagers to really be going into the nether <laughs> I think that'd be a bit dangerous for them. So yeah, as you can see we are inside of the snow village This is the little winter project that we had for uh, 2014 which is kind of cool. I think we did this pretty much through uh, December it was like a December project for 2014, like a little Christmas kind of thing. So, yeah, as you can see, we have multiple entrances all around the place, but it, let's just use this entrance as an example. So, as you can see, straight away to our right hand side, uh, uh, uh. Oh, look at you with your little spoon! Hey! So, I'm distracted now. He's got a little spoon and it's adorable. <laughs> Oh my lord. So as you can see, we have yourself a very basic farm, and I do in fact have a farmer villager roaming around somewhere, and basically he goes ahead and he, uh, you know, sort of picks these things up and plants them back down again, which is kind of cool. So as you can see, all around the place, we have ourselves little igloos. Now obviously these igloos very simply serve as little villager sort of dorms, which is kind of cool. So obviously these all count as doors, and then, you know, hopefully the villagers can breed. So yeah, they're very, very basic. There's nothing really too interesting on the inside inside of them apart from that one which has another portal and then this one over here which actually is the other end of the minecart system i showed you guys earlier as you can see rail snow village to villager island and then this one's just got minecart storage if we just go inside it really quick yeah very very simple nothing too sort of jazzy right there so let's just keep going now we have ourselves another sort of villager igloo this one's got a crafting table in it yeah how about that luxury, buddy? You have a crafting table. Wow, I'm so jealous. Not even I have one of those. <laughs> but yeah, we've got villager... Villager golems? I was going to say villager golems. That's not right. We've got iron golems sort of patrolling the place. So if anybody ever manages to get in, then these guys are going to go to town on their butts. Yeah, that's pretty much how it's going to be. So this igloo has got a little bit of storage, you know, some generic stuff that we managed to pick up along the way. Got a very basic sort of enchanting setup with low level enchants, which is kind of cool. We've got a little ice tray right here, which is kind of cool. Uh, oh, I want to do something really quick. There we go, that should now go ahead and uh, sort of ice itself up. We've got a little snow farm here with this little snow golem, which is pretty cool. So if we just go ahead and do this thing, just got to make sure the hitbox is on it. And yeah, as you can see, Loads and loads of snowballs, which is awesome. Oh, yeah. Oh, get snowed upon. There you go, buddy. <laughs> I don't need these things on me, so I don't know why I blooming did that thing. I guess it was a demonstration more than anything. There we go. Alrighty. And this is the first thing we made inside of this uh, snow village here. We made a little sort of house inside of a large 2x2 two two spruce tree. So we just go up here really quick. We'll just quickly show you what's going on. So if we just go up here, and yeah, we've got like a bed. We'll go to sleep. I don't see why not. We'll be able to see the very nice snowy landscape in the morning. Anyway, let's have a look now. Oh, it's so beautiful, isn't it? It really is quite beautiful. There's the sunrise right there. Wow. That is quite something. And again, you know, got like furnaces, brewing stands, and the chest once again. And again, sort of generic storage. Uh, wow, that's a lot of grass blocks. God damn. I could potentially do with some of them a little bit later. Obsidian as well. <laughs> I keep forgetting most of the things I have in these places. Huh, interesting. Oh well, moving on, I actually think that is uh, pretty much it. Yeah, I believe it is. Wow. Oh, there's a baby villager! 
Oh, you guys bred! <laughs> oh, that's amazing! <laughs> okay, I like that. I've got a little baby villager roaming around. What's he got? He's got a white apron, so I believe he is going to be a butcher or a leather worker, right? One of them too. But yeah, whatever the case, uh, like I said, this was a very sort of basic sort of December winter project that we had going on for the Christmas of 2014. So, you know, there isn't a great deal in terms of things to show as compared to, you know, Villager Island or Neptune's Empire. But it's still a nice little thing that I did. And yeah, I really do like it. I come back here every now and again, you know, mostly for ice. But other than that, you know, this is a pretty, pretty forgotten place. <laughs> but yeah, guys, what we're going to do now is once again, we're going to go into the nether and I shall meet you guys by Neptune's Empire for the final part of the tour. Here we go guys, this is Neptune's Empire. About half of the entire empire is pretty much finished, but in terms of the overall project, in terms of the uh, sea monument, yeah, we still got a lot of things to do, but I guess I could still show you around the things that I have done at the moment. As you can see, uh, what we did is we had a bit of a naming challenge for this thing, and obviously Nate Yanseng was the person who won that by calling this Neptune's Empire, which is kind of cool. But what we're going to do first is we're just going to have a bit of a look from the outside, just so you can see the kind of scale of the work I've been doing for this place. So as you can see, we have a very, very large grass platform on this surface here. Now I intend on doing something up here just to make it look a bit better, you know, maybe make it into the overworld or or just plant some foliage down or maybe make something else completely in here but I have no idea yet we'll have to figure that out later down the line but basically what I did was first of all obviously I took down the bosses inside of the ocean monument you know the three elder guardians to get rid of the mining fatigue and there was one sponge room inside of this ocean monument but after that what I decided to do is I decided to clear out all of the water inside of the actual building itself and then dig it all out so basically the shell of the entire thing remains and then after that what I decided to do is put the entire thing inside of a sand box. Now obviously by using sand I will be able to go ahead smelt it into uh, glass and then obviously we can have glass walls instead. Now that is the intention later down the line obviously that will take a long time considering the amount we're gonna have to place down but I think it's going to be very, very much worth it. But the reason why I put this all within a box is so we could go ahead and eventually clear out all the water from the sort of surrounding areas around the temple. So again, you know, we, we've done a lot of stuff around here. And yeah, most of it's been behind the scenes in terms of, you know, getting things sort of set up, if you get what I mean. But yeah, this is a little boat chute. This is the quickest entrance down into uh, Neptune's Empire. We could just drop down here. The boat will not break, but it'll basically go ahead down here. We can get out the boat and boom, we are all good to go. So before we go in there, I just want to go ahead and uh, just show you guys, <laughs> just show you guys the, uh, the cleared out area around this place because it is pretty damn insane. Now, again, I do intend on lighting this up a bit because, you know, it would be pretty, pretty useful to do that, I guess, just so we can see what's going on, see, see if we can make any sort of plans in terms of what we can do with the surrounding space. Uh, this little building over here is where I go ahead and breed the chickens for a chicken cooker, but I'll show you that a little later down the line once we get inside. So, okay, so that's pretty much it in terms of 
things to show you around here. Like I said, I do have plans for things to do, but uh, we'll get to that a little later down in the series. So let's go ahead and put these back. Sweet. And then this side is where I've got some boats stored, which is, you know, pretty simple. So, <laughs> yeah, got a bit of foliage around here, you know, because, you know, greenery always spruces up any place. And then, of course, we get inside of the Empire. And uh, as you can see straight ahead, you've got the Nether portal back into the Nether. We have some little decorated sort of decorative things going on right here, which is kind of cool. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go to the basement so I can show you the Guardian Farm, because it is a fully functioning Guardian Farm. And at the moment, as it stands, as of this episode, there are two ways of killing the Guardians. I can either kill them using... Uh well, obviously I can use a sword and then take damage, but you know, you don't, when you don't really want to do that because you might die from doing that. I also have some potion dispensers set up down there, but the downside of using that is you don't get XP. So, uh, so what I have been doing is I have been chucking the potions from up here down there, then switchly, switchly, what? <laughs> Quickly switching to my diamond sword of looting because apparently you get the looting effect if you use a potion and then quickly switch And then yeah, I get the I get the XP that way and obviously the drops are there as well Which is kind of cool and then obviously we just go down here and as you can see we have a massive storage area And uh, something I've done since the last episode is I've actually gone ahead and put visual representations of what's inside of each of the uh, sort of columns of chests Which is kind of awesome. So yeah, so all we've got to do is we just got to go down here now obviously the XP is going to come through this little window down here and then obviously if we want to kill them with a sword we can just go ahead and uh, do it through this window. We will never ever get hurt here because obviously they're always bouncing around. So yeah, kind of cool. And uh, one thing I aimed to do with this entire empire is I wanted to try and introduce a bit of automation and redstone into my world because obviously redstone and automation is something I very very rarely do and I would like to try and get into it just a bit more because I feel like It'll be a bit more satisfying to get things going. So as you can see, this is kind of a start. Uh, basically, uh, we actually have two potion dispensers, and this allows us to have either one shootout or both shootouts. So obviously it's flicked up at the moment, so it'll only shoot out once. And obviously if we flick it downwards, it's going to shoot out twice. And then obviously the drops all go into here, uh, because we have hoppers at the bottom down there. And then if we really want to go ahead and uh, fill up the potion dispensers, we have the chest right here. So we just put them in there, and they go into the dispensers. So, yeah. Kind of cool. <laughs> oh, wow. Should we give it a try? Should we give it a try? I'll tell you what, guys. Let's give it a try. Just for the tour. Just for demonstration purposes. We'll do it from up here. Just so, so, so I can show you getting the XP from it. So here we go. Going to quickly switch to the sword, which is number seven. Boom. There we go. So as you can see, a bunch of XP just dropped down there. So we're going to go ahead and grab it really quick. And obviously the drops get uh, put inside of the chest. So let's go ahead and go down here. See how much XP we get. Now, the good thing about killing Guardians is the fact that they actually give the same amount of XP as Blazes do. So, double the amount a normal mob will give you, which I believe is like 10 XP. So, it's pretty damn cool. Very, very worth, uh, you know, making a XP farm if you really want XP. So, yeah, you saw there I went from 27 to 31 levels, which is awesome. <laughs> oh, wow. So, let's get on with uh, touring the rest of this place, shall we? Again, I've done some little minor adjustments since the last episode just to make this look a bit nicer for the tour. If we go inside of the house right here, what was here, it was just the bed. But as you can see, I've added some little decorative things and little functional things. I've even got a little music disc down here. <laughs> just kind of cool. We've got the uh, sort of mini god armor, because, you know, why not? <laughs> yeah, we've got like new depth strider boots, which I'll probably be using in the future. And then obviously we've got some uh, diamond armor as well, along with an ender chest right down here. So that's sort of the little sort of main house done. Now obviously there are some things, some buildings in this empire still to name, so we will have name challenges in the future. But uh, yeah, as you can see we've just gone into the next house. This is the main utility area. Oh man, that music is loud. <laughs> music, you're too loud buddy. You're too loud. Get in the end of the chest. There you go. My god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. But yeah, the utility room, very, very simply got a bunch of storage. This is pretty much all for the prismarine related water monument blocks. You know, we've got like sea lanterns and everything. We've got stone related blocks. We have like sort of generic stuff, you know, sand and gravel, grass and dirt and wood related stuff, generic building blocks. You know, all, all kinds of crap really. And then in these corners are actually little hidden sort of droppers and for some reason they are empty. 
Oh, right, that's right, because I uh, I went ahead and I mined up all of yours and I put them in whatever chest they go in. Yeah, but yeah, as you can see, we've got little droppers in the corners which hold a bunch of valuables that we get from a mining, which is pretty damn awesome. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of cool. So if we move along here, as you can see, I have actually gone ahead and I've populated this village a bit more. I went ahead and did a huge session of uh, sort of zombie villager curing, because, of course, we have a zombie dungeon not too far away from here in the mines. So we just went ahead, AFK'd there until some spawned and then just cured them. <laughs> very, very simple. Yeah, some of these guys have got pretty good trades, and something, again, I did sort of in preparation of this, is I put this here, so you can separate them, or you can let them mix with each other, so, yeah, kind of cool, kind of cool. So moving on, this is the chicken cooker. This is from a design from Izumavoid. So if you guys want to go ahead and check out the chicken cooker design that I used, then uh, go ahead and look in the description. You will, of course, find it. And yeah, very, very simple. And I managed to fit it in here. And yeah, produces some very, very good rates. And I'm a big fan of it. And it's called SFC, Sea Fried Chicken, because why not? <laughs> oh, man. Moving on, we have ourselves another enchanting area. This one's obviously capable of uh, level 30 enchants, because we have more than 15 bookshelves here. So that is kind of awesome. Got a little wheat farm over here simply to serve as a purpose of, you know, giving us wheat to breed these guys. Which, at the moment, there are eight sheep inside of each of the pens. We'll have a look at that in just a sec. But let's go in here. This is the mining house. We have ourselves some stone storage. Well, cobblestone on this side. And then the three different types of stone on this side. So, you know, granite, diorite, andesite. It's all there. And again, nice little decorations, you know, item frames. Uh, item frames? No, not item frames. <laughs> You know, paintings and then flower pots. And then if we go down here, this will take us down to the mines, whereby we can go in all four directions to strip mines. There's one down there, one down there, there's one down here, and then this one is unfinished, but it will go down to another strip mine. And yeah, that's where I've been getting my diamonds and materials for the most part. Obviously, there's things we could put in here, maybe some chests or maybe some utilities or something. I don't know, just to fill it up a bit because it's a bit empty at the moment. But uh, yeah, that's the mining house in a nutshell, which is kind of awesome. <laughs> Alright, moving on. We have ourselves a little sheep farm, which is called the Sea Sheep Shack, which is kind of cool. And again, there's eight sheep in each of these. And basically, the way the grass is regenerating is I've actually got grass blocks underneath the uh, the actual building itself and because this is actually linked to this dirt block the grass will actually spread even if it's dark and even if it's sort of diagonal if you get what I mean but yeah we've got constantly regenerating grass which is awesome and then obviously over here we have ourselves some cool things breeding materials wool and I'm pretty sure yep we've got some shears here as well so yeah we can go and dye them if we want to to get colored wool for anything but yeah aside from that that's the sheep farm in a nutshell which is kind of cool uh, moving along, we have ourselves a fully automatic cactus farm. I made this very, very recently. Again, the functional design is from a user by the name of Mr. Tifo. If you would like to see the uh, sort of functional design on his video, go ahead and check the description once again. It is there, but as you can see, the cactus is filling up very, very nicely. And yeah, doing a very, very nice job. Uh, moving along again, I've got a very basic mushroom farm. As you can quite clearly see, it is working because these things are indeed spreading, which is awesome. And then obviously, got mushroom sort of storage. Very, very simple. Just keep the room dark and they'll just spread. I believe they'll spread quicker on mycelium, but a mushroom biome is something we are yet to find. We'll have to go, like I said, on an exploration session at some point. But yeah, got a very basic sort of nature farm over here, which looks kind of cool. And then, of course, you know, a sugarcane farm. Now, most of the farms I'm making inside of this empire are mainly so I can go ahead and trade with the villagers. Because, you know, we've got some that sort of trade paper. We've got some that trade, like, books and whatnot. And uh, yeah, all is, all is looking good. But aside from from that, ladies and gentlemen, I think that is Neptune's empire in a nutshell, pretty much explored in its fullest. Yeah, as you can see, pretty much, again, like I said, uh, pretty much exactly half of this uh, empire has been completed. Obviously, we've got this half as well, but what I'm going to be doing is I'm actually going to be taking a small break from uh, doing Neptune's empire, because we've been doing it for a very, very long time now, and, uh, well, after a certain amount of time, you tend to get burnt out on projects, and then as a result of doing that, you know, you want to go ahead and do something a little bit different. So, I don't know, we might do something back at Villager Island for a little while, or, I don't know, we might even start a new project altogether. That's the beauty of Minecraft, and that's really how I play vanilla Minecraft on my single-player worlds, you know. 
if you have multiple projects to work on, if you get tired of one project, you can just move on to another project or just start a new one. And then you could just go back to the project a little bit later, complete it, and then boom, away you go. And that's really the way I do things and I really do enjoy it. And as a result, here I am 70 episodes later, still not burnt out on this world and I still have a botload of ideas for things to do. So uh, yeah, you're not in any danger of me giving up this world anytime soon my friends, trust me. Trust me on that. Oh my lord. But yeah guys, that is pretty much the tour in a nutshell done. So I want to thank you guys for watching and I want to like properly sincerely thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you did enjoy the tour and of course you're excited to see more of the series, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to know when the future videos are out. But yes guys, the map download is in the description along with any other info, any other links, just check in the description and they'll pretty much all be there. But yes guys, I would like to thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the tour. I don't intend on doing these too often, but uh, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to do it, really. <laughs> I mean, 70 episodes is a long time before having a tour, so I might do one a little bit sort of sooner next time. But, oh well, doesn't matter a great deal. So yeah, guys, once again, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I shall see you guys in the next episode.